Hello everyone, my name is Melanie Ramey. I teach at Highland Elementary in Johnson County and today I will be presenting my modern classroom in a fourth grade classroom and I do teach mathematics. So to start with a little bit about myself, again I teach in Highland Elementary in Johnson County, Kentucky. I have 14 years of teaching experience. I have taught grades three through six. I'm a 2018 Award E for the Presidential Award of Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. I'm a mentor for new teachers. I'm a Kentucky math teacher leader, and I just recently became a distinguished modern classrooms educator. So to get started today, I'm going to talk about lesson classifications with a modern classrooms model. To Begin your unit, you want to design your lessons in a way that they are classified as either must do lessons, should do lessons, or aspire to do lessons. So this is an example of my unit three lesson classification. Notice that I have named the lesson. I've told approximately how many class periods each lesson should be completed in, and I've also written the classification out beside of it. So the must do lessons appear throughout the unit and students must complete these lessons in order to master the minimum expectation of each lesson. These lessons are often building blocks for the lessons that follow and they consist of an instructional video, guided notes to complete while viewing the instructional video, practice activities, and a mastery check. Should do lessons appear throughout the unit as well, and sometimes towards the end of the unit. These lessons incorporate uh, writing in mathematics. They provide opportunities to share multiple strategies. They may include such tasks as open middle tasks or three act math tasks. So these lessons, uh, we would hope that the fourth graders are able to complete, but some of them may not complete these lessons because the must-do lessons require more of their time and concentration. Then finally, we have aspire to do lessons. So I think of aspire to do lessons as enrichment lessons or sometimes even review lessons. These lessons will often consist of project-based learning opportunities, additional strategies that extend beyond our grade level, puzzles and creations. Next, I want to discuss student note taking. So you can see that um, I have an example here of some guided notes that I have used in lesson 3.3 multiples. Guided notes are a printed version of selected slides from the video plan. Students retrieve guided notes from the unit material station in my classroom. Students may choose to collaborate during this stage of a lesson using headphone splitters. And so that's something I've purchased that allows two students to plug their uh, earbuds into the same device. Students store their guided notes in their progress folders to use as a reference throughout the lesson. And guided notes are also posted to Google Classroom for students who may be quarantined and are working from home. And I apologize for the top cut. Next, once a student has completed the instructional video and the guided notes, they are going to uh, complete some practice activities. So a misconception about the modern classrooms model is that students are always on a computer. Students are not always on a computer and this is the part of the lesson sequence that you get to be creative and design different learning opportunities for your students that can engage them with hands on activities as well. Uh, practice activities are used to develop the skill. Uh, online activities that I use include uh, activities such as boom cards, IXL, Nearpod, slide decks on Google slides and jam boards. I also make sure to provide hands-on opportunities through center activities and games. This part of the lesson can also include paper pencil practice activity, whether it's a worksheet or working in your workbook. Uh, so you can see a picture of my students working in their already work text. 
And also, it's important to note that all directions for practice activities are posted on Google Classroom. So these are self-directed activities. They do not need me to tell them what to do because they have the directions readily available for them. After completing their practice activities, then students complete a mastery check for that lesson. So students have learned the skill, they've been presented the skill through the video and guided notes. They've developed the skill through their practice activity, and then they must see me in order to receive a mastery check organized in my teacher station. And these mastery checks determine if a student has mastered that skill or not, and if they're ready to move on to the next lesson. The mastery checks are completed at the mastery check desk in my classroom. You can see an image of that. Students turn in their mastery checks into the turn-in tray at the front of my room, and then they move on to the next lesson. Mastery checks are returned and marked with either a yes for mastered or a no or revise if they did not master that mastery check. So even if a student has moved on to the next lesson, they can still go back and make revisions to uh, the previous mastery check in order to really fully be on that next lesson. This is uh, my reassessment plan. I actually have an anchor chart of this posted in my classroom for students to know what their next steps are after completing a mastery check. So did they show mastery? If that answer is a yes, then they advance to the next lesson. If that answer is a no, then there are some things that they may need to do. They may need to rewatch the instructional video. They may need to meet with me for a conference. They may need some extra practice activities that are already posted on Google Classroom for each lesson. Or they, no matter what they choose, they're gonna see me to reassess. Sometimes you're gonna see that students have just made some simple mistakes that don't need reteaching. If that's the case, then they are allowed to revise their work and turn that back in without completing all of those extra activities. Next, let's discuss my learning sys management system, which is Google Classroom. On Google Classroom, I post all of my unit materials up front. So day one of the unit, every part of that unit is readily available. And the purpose for this is so that students can work at their own pace. If the resources aren't there, then they can't advance through the lessons as they need to. I've attached a screenshot of my unit two, part of my unit two that's posted in Google Classroom. I do post something that I call Do Now Reflections. Those are posted there so that the students can complete those each day before beginning their lesson work. I post a view only copy of my public progress tracker so that students can access this to know who they could possibly collaborate with. I post directions for all instructional videos, guided notes, practices for each uh, unit and each lesson organized into one topic. And um, not only do I post the directions, but I also go ahead and post any links or any attachments that they will need. A separate topic for extra practice activities is provided if needed during the reassessment process. So students can complete these if they just choose to take some extra practice opportunities at home, or um, if I have actually assigned them to them, then they know where to find it in that separate topic. So some ways that motivation uh, is incorporated into this model, two ways are the public progress tracker and through goal setting. So each day uh, we review our public progress tracker. I do not have student names on this public progress tracker, but in the classroom I do put their name. Scores are never shown on a public progress tracker, only the lesson that that student is on. And the purpose for this is so that they can view their progress tracker. And if I see that I'm on lesson 3.5 and so is student nine, then I may want to collaborate on practice activities with that student. And so that way they actually, it frees me up because they don't have to come and contact me and ask me who they can work with. They can actually uh, engage with this 
progress tracker on their own and determine that themselves. Some other things that are included on the public progress tracker are three stars of the day. This is another piece of motivation. Um, they can actually, I, I give away three stars, not physically, but just on this progress tracker and they love it. And um, I praise anything from effort to achievement. And there is a key on my public progress tracker. It's color coded. So if their lesson is in black, they are behind pace. If it is in this orangish yellowish color, then they are on pace. Green is ahead of pace and blue means that they are revising that lesson. We also motivate in my classroom using goal setting. After reviewing the public progress tracker, we open our do now reflection sheets and they reflect at the beginning of class. You can see that they actually set a goal for that day and they highlight strategies that they will use to help them achieve that goal. And so they get really excited about meeting that goal for the day. Some students base it on um, achievement and, and progress. They may say, I want to complete um, two mastery checks to get back on pace today. Or they may just say, I want to be more focused in class today. And it may be more behavior oriented. More motivation. I also use student facing progress trackers. So each student has a copy of their unit game board in their progress folder. And I do make the unit game board as appealing as possible. This uh, game board shows them where they're headed next and which lesson they are on. When they complete and master a lesson, then they get to mark their game piece with a sticker. So they have stickers in their progress folder already. When I return their mastery check to them marked as yes, it's mastered, then they get to put a sticker on that game space. Also, the aspire to do lessons serve as motivation as well because sometimes, for example, over here on my Halloween progress tracker, sometimes my should do lessons or my aspire to do lessons are games such as factors and multiples Jenga. Collaboration is very important in a modern classroom. I'm gonna move my picture over here so you can see my students. It is very important because it allows students to serve as teachers and it also allows me to be a little more free to provide one-on-one -on -one instruction to those students who really need it. Um, so students have multiple opportunities for collaboration in my classroom. I do a problem of the day. And so they have time to use talk partners for that. We also have our collaboration corner set up with rocking chairs and a nice little atmosphere where students can go to work with each other on their practice activities. I use the ask three before me strategy. So students can go ask three friends if I'm busy conferencing with a student and they collaborate in that way as well. And then I also use student teaching assistance. So if I have students who are really ahead of pace or they are just excellent partners, then I designate them as student teaching assistants for the day. And if a student has already asked three and those friends can't help and I'm busy conferencing with a student or students, then they can go to that teaching assistant and ask for help. I also have a picture of my students collaborating on my carpet as well. That's another station where they can collaborate. So next is classroom organization, which is very important with a modern classroom. First of all, I have my students keep progress folders. And in these progress folders, they store their game board, which is their student facing tracker, stickers to mark their progress, they store their guided notes in these folders to use as resources and any unfinished work that they need to get to the next day. These folders do not leave my room. They are actually stored in the front of my classroom. I am departmentalized. I have three home rooms that I teach. And so each home room has their own color of progress folder. I store my printed materials in the back of the room on my heating and cooling unit and in this, um, these sets of drawers, you can't really see it, but they're marked by lessons. So lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, and it goes all the way up to lesson 12. I don't put unit numbers on there so that I can reuse these as needed. I also store any center activities in a white basket 
in the same location. Within each drawer, there is a folder for guided notes, practice, and extra practice. So all of these are printed and copied before the unit begins so that students can go grab what they need as they need it. Collaboration areas in my classroom. The two main collaboration areas are the collaboration corner with the rocking chairs and the carpet at the front of the room. Um, also, I have some extra tables where they can collaborate if necessary. It's very important that you organize your classroom with designated spaces. Then we have teacher conferences. So in the middle picture, you're gonna see my instructional nest. This is where I conduct my teacher conferences. It's also where I store my mastery checks in the folder um, organizer hanging on the wall there. On my board, you can see I have a designated space for students to sign up for teacher conferences. And also, I have a little reminder posted on my help center wall in the back of the room. And this poster says, need help, question mark. And it reminds them of the ask three before me strategy. And it reminds them to sign up for teacher conferences. Also, to reduce the number of teacher conferences um, where students are simply asking, what do they do next? I also posted my anchor chart for my reassessment plan in the Health Center. Speaking of my instructional nest, here are some better pictures. So you can see that I have all of my mastery checks ready for me to grab and disperse. I've got a miniature whiteboard here to use in case I need to. I also have my Century 21 station set up where I can um, maybe pull up some of the online practice activities that they need assistance with. And then I have my kidney shaped table, which is, as we all know, perfect for small group or one on one. My mastery checks. So once they obtain their mastery check, they can come to the mastery check table where they uh, have a quiet area, just them to complete their mastery check. And then they turn it into the turn in tray in the middle drawer. Sometimes they'll turn it in straight to me if I'm readily available so that I can provide immediate feedback. Throughout my class period, I do try to pull these out as often as possible to be able to provide immediate feedback. My grading policy. So this is a mastery based classroom model. Grades are not taken on practice activities because the purpose of these practice activities is to develop the skill. Grades are not, I'm sorry, grades are taken on mastery checks. Partial credit is not given because students do not move on to the next lesson until they've shown mastery on that skill. Grades are also taken on unit tests. And so one massive benefit of this grading policy is that at any point in time, if a parent asks me, hey, what does my student, my child need to do to uh, help bring up their grade, then I can not only just say, oh, well, here's this assignment they need to complete because they're missing these points. I can actually say to them, this is the skill that they're lacking. And also the lesson for that skill and practice activities for that skill are posted on Google Classroom. And they can do that at home as well. The only thing that they cannot do at home is the mastery check because I need to see that that student has actually developed and mastered that skill. So I do only give those at school. This classroom model is a wonderful model for equity and providing accommodations. Extra time is built into this unit plan to complete assignments because those should do lessons and those aspire to do lessons do not have to be completed if they need extra time on some other skills. And so it, I'm better able to provide extra time to complete those assignments. Students receiving IEP and 504 services have more time to master the content. Not only that, the, the unit plan allows for built-in intervention and enrichment. So not only can I be providing intervention as needed, but also those students who are excelling can move on to those enrichment lessons and I can provide uh, activities to meet their needs as well. It also provides more time to provide accommodations such as a reader and a scribe. So I can actually have more time to work with those students at my table and as well as peers providing those accommodations through collaboration activities. This system is also more accommodating to absent students. 
When they are absent, they can log on to Google Classroom, complete what uh, lesson they left off on. If they don't know what the lesson they left off on, they just open the tracker to see and they have all of those uh, materials readily available to them at home. Also, we all know that we do have some students who don't do their work at home if they are um, supposed to be working from home. So when they return, instead of forcing them onto a skill that they're not ready for just because the rest of us are on that skill, they can still pick up where they left off and they do still have opportunity to catch up and become uh, or to be on pace because if there are lessons that are should do or aspire to do that are coming up, I can have them skip those lessons or they can go home after the fact and get on pace. So I've had some reactions from students. They've been positive, really all of the reactions have been positive. Um, I asked students in a survey, what was your favorite part of this unit? Some of the responses I got, all of it, but if I had to choose one, it would be being able to get help from the teacher when I need it. Some students like the lesson summary that is provided at the end of an instructional video. And another student just said all of it. I asked students what they were celebrating at the end of one of my units. And one of them said, I'm going to celebrate staying on track and helping others with this unit. And they really do enjoy working together and collaborating so much.